Welcome back, Fluflu FPV here, and today we're going to be talking about the modification, the modifications I did on the Spectrum DX9 radio. So, as a note, do not attempt these modifications if you do not have a ham radio license, because we will be opening up and modifying a radio, uh, sorry, a transmitting module. So keep that in mind. So first modification, you will need your 3D printed mount, which also, in, which you also need the SMA or RPSMA to UFL adapters. You'll need your antennas. Once again, I'll, I'll put these two items in the description. Uh, tweezers are very nice to have. And you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. So, to speed up this video, so I have taken out the battery as well as the padding around it padding and the battery just so that your radio does not have any power to it so you can't accidentally turn it on while you're working on the inside after this I have taken off the original antenna cover which to take that off you take out these two screws right here then I took out the the screws that hold the two case halves together which involve this screw this here here, 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 and here. So for, after that, you'll take apart your radio. Just open it gently. And here you go. So when you open it up, you'll have these two wires connected. You'll have this antenna cable connected. So just be careful because you can get that caught in something or break a connector which that would not be good. So from there you'll take off these two connectors which let's zoom in on that. So we are looking at these two connectors right here. Those are very small connectors and they only are good they're only sorry they're only rated for about five connections. So be careful and make sure you know what you're doing. So, let's zoom you out. So, from here, you'll take out this antenna. I am choosing to leave it because I, will, I may or may not be replacing it, or sorry, uh, putting it back in after I do this modification. So, a quick note on this printed part. I don't know if it was from the printer I got I printed it from or if it's part of the design but right here let's see if you'll focus but this part right here on both sides I had to dremel out so just as a note but once again I don't know if that was the printer I got it on from or what it may have been. So, also these holes that the SMAs went in were also kind of small. So, you're going to feed these two connectors in through the hole that the original antenna was in. From there, you will connect this cable or sorry, this antenna and this antenna. So I'm not going to be doing that because I have actually already done this modification and I am taking it apart and returning it to stock for because I will be selling it and I will be selling this radio and replacing it with uh, Free Sky Tyrannus. So If, it, if you're using this, those will be fed through and you'll connect these these little connectors onto the previously noted UFL connectors. So, this is where the tweezers come in handy. Let's 
sorry if that's if my hands get in the way. So they're very small connectors, and they are they can be challenging to get in. So you can see that this feeds through. I believe there might have actually been an adapter in there to prevent it from feeding through. So welcome back. Real quick update: I was not able to find the adapter that apparently went on here. So I'll leave as is and glue in place. Just use a little hot glue. But that'll feed through right there. And careful, once again, sorry if I get in the way. But Okay, let's look at that. So those are just fitted in. The antenna, or sorry, the handle antenna is this one right here, and it's routed like this. The stock antenna is routed down and like that. So if you are using, if you are using the, if you are modifying the radio, they, they can both actually loop up right here and here for each side and they can be connected on here. So as as a really quick note, it does not matter what antenna goes to what connector if you are modifying it. So don't worry about that. The left connect the left antenna doesn't have to go with the left antenna and vice versa. So this is a quick note. So we'll so now it's a good idea to put a little bit of hot glue over these connections just to make sure they don't fall off after some use. So I'll be right back and these will be glued in place as well as my antenna. So see you back. Alright so with Mac I just went and glued these three points in place. Now if you are doing the modified antenna, you will not have to glue this in place. It'll be attached by the two screws that originally held the original antenna in place. So you don't have to worry about that. So now we are pretty much done with the internal stuff. We just have to remember to reinstall these plugs. Now these plugs do are only one way. So it's not there's not too much of a worry of putting them in backwards, although you should you do need still need to make sure. Because they can be forced in place. They can sorry, they can be forced in backwards. So now that we have this done. Just need to check that. Okay. So now that we have this done, we can now uh, start to reassemble the radio. So, because there aren't any switches that are loose, we don't have to worry about replacing any switches. But what you do have to, sorry, what you do have to worry about are these wires. Because they can, if you're not careful, you can pinch them in the gimbals, and the gimbals won't move freely. Or they can be pinched on the side of the case, and you can possibly break a wire, which is not good. So, you're just going to be careful. For the most part, the your radio the radio is going to automat the sorry, the wires are going to automatically want to replace themselves back to where they or sorry, uh, they're going to auto, pretty much sorry. They're going to automatically want to go back to how they were originally just because they've been sitting so long and they're kind of uh, creased. So once you get it together, just move your gimbals around really quick. And everything seems fine. So now we're good to assemble it. Make again also make sure that the crease that the line along the side where the two halves split is closed all the way with closed being there, there there will be a little bit of a gap but ma make sure there aren't any huge gaps all the way around it so 
Now we can reinstall our screws and I'll fast forward through this. All right, so welcome back. So, if you are doing the modified antenna, you're going to want to make sure when you slide this on, finally, that the that these coax wires are going to slide in and not get bunched up, because that can possibly damage the SMA the where the, sorry that can possibly damage where these coax connects to the SMA because that's a it's a very small joint so the fatigue of bending can poss can has the possibility of breaking the coax so although in this case I'm just gonna make sure that's straight and slide it in so after this you are about done Although I'm going to talk about the modified antenna options really quick. So the the antennas I'm using are the antennas, the modified antennas I'm using, which can also be seen in the range test. The range test can also be seen in the in my range test video, which I'll put in the description. This video. This video shows the range differences between the modified and unmodified. So, quick, the unmodified is a 2, de two dBi antenna. So, it's, just, it's going to make, it's going to have a radiation pattern more of a sphere, where a 6 dBi and so the, high, the higher dBi rating that an antenna is, the more of a squashed but wider signal you're going to get. So, if you have these, let's see, if you have these antennas positioned on the radio at 90 degrees from each other, and so positioned like that, you should be perfectly fine because if they are. If they're parallel to each other, they're going to radiate in the same plane. Whereas if they are at an angle to each other, they will cancel out each other's dead zone. So the higher so real quick, the higher the the higher DBI rating of an antenna, the more the the larger dead zone on either end, but you're going to be able to punch out much farther, but not as high. With a lower DBI, so like what stock at two DBI antennas, those are going to you're going to get you're going to be able to go you're going to be able sorry uh, you're going to be able to go all around you and up down, but you're not going to get as much distance and penetration into objects. So finally, finishing up this modification, we're going to reinstall the there, wrong way. There's a note the the little the tabs that hold the pins in on the battery connector go up. So just gonna install the battery. Install the pad. And we're just about finished. So, once again, I'm going to say this because this is a, this is very important. If you do not have a ham radio license, you will not be able to legally do this. So please stay legal and have a license if you are planning on this modification. So, real quick, you only need a technician class or yeah, tec technician class amateur radio license. And it's it's a pretty quick course. Just make sure your make sure you have the 
license so you're doing it legally. Also if you're doing FPV, if you're using FPV on 5.8, 900 or 1.2 megahertz or gigahertz you and you're operating at any reasonable output level so greater than I believe 25 milliwatts you'll also need a license so if you've been doing FPV for a while and you have that license it'll carry over just fine onto this radio modification so I hope you guys enjoyed please like subscribe comment and as always keep on flying